Okay, we're on to painting this caricature letter opener. And I've got two here that I've already painted. And you can see one has hair, big bushy eyebrows. Another one doesn't have any hair. Looks like he's a boxer, been beat up a little bit. Anyway, we're gonna. I tried to find two of the five that I've, I've finished and I found two. One that kind of looks like this fella in terms of hair and the way his face is shaped and one that sort of looked like this fella. I'm doing two because I want to show you a little bit different ways to paint faces. I have a, had, when I first started carving, a difficult time getting faces right. It was either too dark or too light. And over the course of years, I have found ways to st steal, essentially, from someone else what they're doing and make it my own. And so I'll show you one way that a guy named Lynn Dowdy from Out West Wood Carving does. He uses transparent red iron oxide and he uses yellow ochre. And we'll take a look at that and see how that turns out on one of these guys. And on the other one, I will use flesh tone, dark flesh, and a little bit of this tomato red for highlight. I like it. I like this more than others simply because I get three hues, three tones, three shades, whatever, whatever artistic term you use. I like it because I can mix and match these. I can make them look close to each other, but just enough that when you put them on the wood, it shows all the different colors and the different shades in facial, facial skin tones. We'll use black around the eyeball and the, to highlight the iris, and I'll use a real light green for the eye. And then we'll use a little bit of this Americana buttermilk for a tint and a shading and a little bit of antiquing out here on the outside of the eye, of the uh, hair. So we'll put those two aside. And we'll get our paint I'm using a different paint tray today than I've used before. That's kind of dusty. It's been sitting back there. I'll take a minute to wipe that out a little bit. Anyway, this will give me a chance to spread the colors out a little bit more than it would in the standard one that I use, which is only about that big around. All right, we always start with um, some flesh tone. And let's start with this one here. We'll do a little bit of this transparent red iron oxide. I tried to find it in the Americana, couldn't ever find it at our local stores. Order it online and it costs you three times as much to ship it as it does to buy it. So we're just gonna use a little bit of this Graham and Company acrylic artist color I got from our local art store called Quality Art. And we're just gonna use a little bit of that. Hopefully you can see that out there. We're just using just enough of that paint to color what we need to color and then we're gonna get ourselves a little bit of this red ochre out here in another well well that red the yellow ochre hasn't been opened so we'll take a moment to figure out how to open these things ah there we go brand new thing of paint we'll shake it up well and we'll get just a little bit of that yellow ochre in the corner here we don't need much because we're going to be mixing back and forth We'll take our pipette, we'll get a little bit of water in there that we can mix with and that gives us an opportunity to dilute it as much as we want. Okay, so a lot of times when I do paint, when I, do, when I paint faces, I'll wet the face down to start with and I'm, I'm going to reach over here and grab a brush to do just that. What I want to do is just make sure that we're smoothing all the highlights out. Sometimes this wood has a tendency to have pieces that will stick out. This will raise the grain and will also give us a chance to make sure that the paint flows evenly throughout all the paint. So I'm just going to dab it, take out the shiny parts. I don't want a lot of water sitting on there. I want enough for it to be damp so that it's going to flow. But I also have to watch out when it flows as well because sometimes it wants to flow into other areas where one color flows into another. So we'll take a little bit of this yellow ochre here. Let me get that up here so you can see it. We'll just make that yellow ochre 
I diluted way down here with water a little bit more here and then we can dip back in here to this little bit of paint there. We'll start with more water and we'll get a little bit of this red iron oxide. Now when you look at these two colors they look very stark in terms of facial colors and you're looking at that thinking that doesn't hardly look right but sometimes you get a color and you get it in on the wood and depending on the value that you've got it on there really a little paint or a lot of paint you can get it close to where when it dries on the wood you get a color that looks close to human faces so what I'm doing is going back and forth between the two because this red iron oxide is going to be a stronger value than this yellow ochre and I want to just make sure that I have a lighter color of the two. We'll put a little bit of that on the head. Looks like it might be a little dark. So we'll go into a little bit more of that paint. And you see how it started out dark and now it's fading away. And so we'll see that as we as we paint a little more. That paint essentially stains the wood and goes deep into it. So we'll go back and forth between these two. I want to try to get this painting on this face done all in one fell swoop so that it doesn't dry out on me because sometimes when you are trying to paint and it dries out on you then you have a hard time matching that value as well so I try to paint the face all in one one setting I don't want to and I, you notice I painted in the eye I'm going to leave that in there because it doesn't, it's not going to affect what I'm going to do in terms of painting over the eye. It actually will enhance the face itself because you get a little of the skin tone in the eye. And when you go to paint a white eyeball in there, it doesn't make it look quite so stark, quite so dramatic in terms of here you have maybe a face that has some color to it, especially if you're doing uh, any type of carving that has a suntan or has a different background than Caucasian sometimes you can get these colors to the point where they're, they're so dark on the wood that when you paint the eyeball it looks really really stark and it just it's it's almost too dark or too light rather too stark okay so we've got it covered with paint in all the spots and now we can go and clean my brush out start adding a little bit more of this darker color I want to go right into the ear where there's a little bit of shadows down there I want to go right up here under the nose make that a little bit darker under there it'll make that shadow stick out I want to go right here around the eyebrow the eyelids because those eyelids are sometimes back there in shadow I'm going to go here along smile line, get that shadow down in there. And I don't didn't get enough shadow in the ear, so I'm going to add just a little bit more. And I want to do right along the lips. And for the lips, I'm going to make this just a little bit stronger. I'll dip a little bit more of that red iron oxide. And we'll paint right there in those lips. Okay. Now if you notice it does, probably doesn't show up on camera very well. I'm having a hard time picking that up. may not show up on the camera very well, but now we can see where we can add a little bit darker color and let it soak in. And as I mentioned earlier, you wouldn't think transparent red iron oxide would be something you'd paint a face with, but in reality, uh, this is actually, a, it comes out as a very good color by the time you end up with the, with the highlights on it. It looks pretty good. We'll put a little bit of shadow up under the up under the chin. A little too dark there. And then we'll put some shadow back here on the back of the head. And by the time we blend all that in, we get a fairly wide range of color throughout carving. So we've got his head up here, we'll make it a little bit little bit 
add a little bit of color to it because it's wet underneath it'll have a tendency to flow in and that'll look make him look like his head's been out in the sun a little bit give him a little highlight right here on the cheek give him another little highlight right out here on the wing of the nose and one right out here on the end and because that's wet paint it'll flow and it'll allow me to make that the color that I'm looking for okay we're gonna set that aside to dry call this video done we'll come back and see if we can't play around with him some more see you in the next one